Welcome back to The Mining Pod. Today in the show, I'm joined again by Matt Kimmel of CoinShares to talk about the 12% difficulty increase, Grayscale's new mining product, miners raising capital, and the latest from Compute North's Chapter 11. Matt, welcome back to The Mining Pod. How was your week since we've seen you last? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Actually, I'm a little disappointed. Why are you disappointed? Because there, okay, so there was the Elon news yesterday where he made an offer for Twitter, right? And Definitely. in a bull market, Dogecoin would have like skyrocketed and we all would have had a good <laughs> laugh. Like it would have been hilarious and, and it would have been good fun. Yeah. But it just didn't. It's, like, <laughs> it's the meme. It's the, uh, it's a Toy Story meme. You know, you had us on the yeah. drop the doll, he dropped Woody, and now he's picked up Twitter. And that's his new fun thing to play with. Twitter, the stock was going all over the place. Like, did you see a rebound from like the the lows? I think it was like low 40s or something like that. And then it shot back up to the offering of 54, 20, whatever it was. Yeah, the market was like being getting brutalized, but Twitter had a good day because people like Elon. But in our in our bear market times in crypto, I you know, I just want to bring back some meme. Uh, coin conversations a little bit just just for good fun here and there just lighten up the air you know we do miss Do- dogecoin i do miss it we had a great piece 18 months ago or so about dogecoin and dogecoin dead wow eh. dogecoin <laughs> miners how much they were making during the bull market it was quite a bit quite a bit of money but let's not talk about dogecoin let's talk about bitcoin mining which is probably the most depressing subject right now with (laughs) the increase about to happen give us the lowdown well we're about four days out expected from another difficulty adjustment and it looks like we're going to go up over 12 percent as of right now so if you're sort of a fringe miner right now you're in deep trouble um, we talked last week about how there was like a, you know, sort of a, the last difficulty adjustment was a small 2% sort of downward. Um, and that we likely thought that this was a temporary thing. And it, it turns out to be true. And I got right here, I looked it up. A lot of the Q3 numbers are out now for the public listed miners. Clean Spark up, Core Scientific up, Riot up, Bitfarms up. And it's not just necessarily like a small amount. Um, like Clean Clean Spark, which we know had, uh, just acquired a new place in Georgia, right? So that's expected, but month over month, like twenty percent, that's huge. Um, and I think we can credit a lot of this to uh, S nineteen XPs being delivered and being deployed and coming online, right? The newest, most powerful, most efficient ASIC out there um, is being turned on and it's really pushing hash rate higher. Yeah, that's definitely the analysis I'm seeing for most research out there, which makes sense, right? You can just look at Bitmain deliveries and talk to miners and more or less the correlations very strong there. Of course, Texas summer's coming down, like it's getting a little cooler. I'm assuming I'm not in Austin right now, but assuming it's getting a little cooler. So I think like Riot and other miners in the area are turning back on like Argo. So that can definitely contribute. And then I think some delayed miners are finally getting online, like getting past some infrastructure bottlenecks. So that is also a reason for it. So the biggest takeaway for me is I think we're actually going to get a very good valuation or number for how much hash rate is owned by publicly listed companies. And not to sound super bearish on top of the awful difficulty news, but a large portion of hash rate being owned by publicly listed miners is not great for the network in my mind's eye. I think it's actually a net negative. I think you have to think about like all the different stacks of decentralization and geographic decentralization is one thing. Yes. Pool decentralization is another thing. Yes. But having different sort of like legal stacks involved with decentralization is also important. Having a lot of private miners, off grid miners, some publicly listed miners, that's good. I think we're going to see like hash rate for publicly listed miners push back or push above like the 30% is typically been at with all these latest deployments. I think it could move towards 40%, which is huge, right? Because these companies are mostly listed in the US and Canada. And we don't know what that means. Do they push ESG concerns on top of these shareholders? Do big entities like BlackRock start making policy decisions on behalf of miners? Not a great thing for the network. Hopefully, we find some cheap energy in different countries and people stop using the 
easy capital and credit to get their minds online faster. But I'll leave that story there unless you have any other insights. I'm not ready to sound the alarm yet, right? But to your point, Rhodium went public last week, right? We talked about it. And so there's a lot of hash rate now that could be under regulatory pressure. A lot of, you know, once the China ban happened, a lot of hash rate came over to the United States. Um, and people have been getting access to the public equity markets um, to tax as capital, right? And so a lot of hash rate is under sort of the legal framework. We shall see what happens with that. I think a lot of people out there like to make the ETH2 comparison with Coinbase, Kraken, Vito, and say that it's very centralized, but then they forget to look at the amount of hash rate owned by publicly listed miners. And yes, proof of work, proof of stake, very different. Yes, the concerns are very different, but at the same time, I think Bitcoiners would be wise to pay attention to that because there are very direct policy decisions. Large entities that have controlling shares and companies like Riot or Marathon can make, and that's uncomfortable for everybody. Let's move to our nuances that we can get into in another show. A lot of nuances. The researcher wants to get into the nuance. Shocking to me. Okay, (laughs) a a little outline for the show for everyone. We're talking about this week's news, of course. The first thing we're going to talk about is Grayscale offering a new product for distressed assets. And for those who want to invest in Bitcoin during a bear market, then we're going to talk about ACDC, which is a miner out there doing a little bit of a raise. Going to talk about Greenage's new offering, stock offering, which we're seeing a few companies do because uh, debt is expensive. You got to make some decisions. And then we're going to finish up with a conversation about Compute North and Marathon Digital, both of which are having troubles staying out of headlines. I understand it. It's tough. It's tough to do that. Let's start with Grayscale, though. Give us the skinny on this one. Yeah, they sort of opened a a special purpose vehicle is what it seems like. So private investors, institutional capital can get access to uh, the Bitcoin mining space. I think generally you know this is not necessarily a surprise they already have a foundry digital who runs the largest bitcoin mining pool but also sort of brokers asics on the secondary markets um, as a subsidiary of digital currency group and so i think they're probably seeing oh there's a lot of machines that are really cheap right now Um, might as well build out some infrastructure and give access to institutional investors that's what they like to do it's what they've done with their gbtc product um, and it looks like that's what they're trying to do again Yep. Good summary there. From my take this, uh, for those who are not familiar with Grayscale and the octopus that it is, they have a lot of different firms. They have Coindesk. uh, Well, actually, it should go up a stack. DCG, right? DCG owns Grayscale, Genesis, Coindesk, and Foundry. And now they're going to offer more servicing for Foundry. Foundry has been one of the most successful products they've launched to date. Uh, It's been a just a beast, right? So like they came in with like no hash rate in their pool. They're now the largest pool with happened in two years, right? Just huge. They timed it perfectly with the China ban. Uh, They've offered up technical services. They have like a foundry academy for training people. They also have uh, some sort of co-location service, I believe. And then they also have like this marketplace for anyone who wants to buy like 25 plus miners or 50 plus miners. You can go to them. And so it makes sense for them to offer yet another thing they're putting their money down on the projects that are working. And them, I'm talking about DCG and Grayscale, like they're going to put money into things that are working. Genesis, we can pull up that dead body. They had a rough go of things. They loaned like $2.4 billion to Three Arrows Capital. And they had to reshuffle the executives at Genesis because of that loan going sour. And so I can see the people in the exec chairs at DCG and Grayscale and elsewhere thinking, uh, maybe good to put money on Foundry. They seem to be using it pretty responsibly. So that's how I read this headline. Uh, I don't know if you have any more takes on that one, though. No, we'll keep pushing. Cool. Actually going to hand this one right back to you. Aston Creek Digital raises $8 million in Series A funding. I don't think a lot of people know about ACDC, which is a great name, obviously. Hand it over to you. Can you explain the firm and then why this raise is important in your mind's eye? Uh, ACDC signic- significant to me because they use solar energy for one. They're sort of a behind the meter miner, so they're sort of unrivaled energy, right? They're not necessarily buying it spot from the grid. Um, from what it seems like, according to a CoinDesk interview the other day, 
they are also sort of designing and building a lot of their own energy infrastructure. So it seems like they're shielded from some of the supply chain disruptions happening overseas. I don't know. To me, the mining market's a mess right now, right? You look at every public listed miner has a lot of uh, net losses, right? They're all sort of have cited. If I read another statement that says, you know, due to quote unquote sudden uh, mining economic changes, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to start laughing. It's everywhere, right? We see um, the sort of capital access tightening where we saw Maple, for example, open a new uh, mining capital pool the other week, and they practically doubled the lending rates. Um, it's like twenty percent. Yikes! Like, yeah. right? And then, um, so it's not just in the traditional finance space; it's coming to the to the mining space as well. And you know, a lot of people might be seeing all this blood and say, "I want to stay away," but I think it actually is kind of a smart move for the investors here. You know, you're buying um, distressed assets. And if you have confidence in the future of Bitcoin mining, this could pay off, especially because they don't have to deal with the ESG pressure, right? They're using renewable energy. Um, They don't have to worry about spot grid prices either. So it seems like, you know, this could potentially pay off. um, And ACD say maybe like a good move here. And, And they're looking to expand in the bear market, right? If you have cash on hand, that's of course a good idea. You're not buying $80 per terahash machines, you're buying $20 per terahash machines, right? That could set you apart. And it's just a year's difference from when miners were buying at those levels. So good analysis there. This is narrative watch time, right? Narrative watch, we see two divergent paths. We see miners who use capital markets during the bull market to get their hash rate online that either worked or it didn't work. Uh, some miners it did work for, I'd say like Riot, Windstone made a lot of moves. They have a decent hash rate online. Last two months been kind of tough, but that's just because it's hot in Texas, but they've been moving ahead. On the other side, you have miners like Greenage and others who have been making some expensive debt payments. We'll dig into that in a second. And they are going to struggle during the bear market to get their economics right and make good decisions. and stay basically in the green if they can at all. And then we have like this third little path with, with is, uh, which is ACDC and it's smaller. Not a lot of people knew about them, but they've been responsible. They've been making good decisions. They've been lo- looking at the timing of the markets and they're moving into basically a war zone where there's like a lot of free looting to be had. You can go purchase ASICs really cheap. There's some hosting contracts that have gone belly up. You can go find equipment. You can go find infrastructure where you need it and get your mindset up for a little bit cheaper than you could have a year ago. Uh, so we have those three things to watch. The responsible people during a bull market, responsible people during a bear market who are going to build like ACDC and the people who are sort of on the rocks. The greenage thing is what what I want to bring up next. And this is a tough one to see just based on looking at greenage's debt numbers and just be upfront about this, not picking a greenage. There's actually a decent amount of miners who are in the same point as them. This one's just a headline we have today. Greenage seeks to raise up to $22.8 million in a stock offering. They're offering class A shares. They're working with B. Riley, which is an investment bank, also worked with Iris Energy for a recent uh, stock offering they did. Trying to get this money basically pay off their debt. According to numbers that we have at Compass, and we ran a mining memo back in beginning of August, uh, they have Greenwich has a decent amount of debt payments. They have about four point four million dollars in debt payments they have to make per month, both in interest and the underlying principal payment. It's a lot. It's like one hundred seventy million dollars in total debt that they have to make pay off. And this is for a few sites that they have both built and some that are operating. They're pulling in about two hundred plus Bitcoin per month, which comes to about four million. So more or less like their revenue is all eaten up by the payments they have to make. And so you're flat and that's not even coming into contact with like operations, energy payments, administration, all those things, sort of things you have to make payments on. What do you do? You have to go to capital markets and you have to make a decision with the investment bank on how you're going to handle your finances. And so this is not a surprising headline based on Green Inch's numbers that they put out this summer. It is unfortunate though, 
And it's unfortunate because it's not just Greenage. There's a lot of these miners that are going to have to do these stock offerings. It means they're going to have to dilute themselves. They're going to have to dilute shareholders. They're going to have to dilute anyone who's in the company. And maybe they get out of this, but the bear market is just setting in. So it could get worse. And you know, you might have to keep diluting. And then who knows what happens after that. Last point before I hand it off to you is you know, a lot of these miners are listed on the NASDAQ. Well, guess what? The NASDAQ does have a limit for how low your stock can be before they delist it. There's different ranges for what kind of stock you are, $3, $2, and $1. If you get below that for enough amount of time, you can get kicked off of it. And then you have to go to a different exchange with less liquidity. Your stock suffers ever, even more and gets to a pretty hairy spot. So uh, not saying that's going to happen with Greenage, but I could see a few of these miners suffering, getting kicked off an exchange or two because their stock price has not been holding up very well. Throw it over to you though. Through a lot of info. Pain. I hope we don't have to see that. Um, I, you covered that really well. I mean, and you saw some of the foreshadowing and the numbers as far as their debt expenses go. I remember I, it was last month and in, in August, they sort of uh, had a release saying that they were going to stop expanding um, in a project to Texas. And so there's a bit of foreshadowing in the news there as well. Um, yeah, I mean, tough for Greenage. Good that they actually got the raise done, right? And they're going to sort of keep fighting. Uh, but I think you covered it well already and, and hit all the high points. Yeah, again, not picking on Greenage here. There's a decent amount of miners in this position. If anyone's interested on debt markets, mining, just hit up the Compass Mining website, go to our content tab, and there's an article somewhere on the page. Maybe just use the search bar. Miners face millions in debt payments as revenues dry up. That's as of August from one of our favorite writers, Anthony Power. Okay, let's go to the last topic for the day. Bitcoin Miner Marathon invested $31.3 million in bankrupt data center Compute North. This is from Coindesk. It was published this morning at 8 a.m. Central Time, recording as of Thursday. The story here more or less is... Marathon Digital was hosting with Compute North. They wanted Compute North to get their machines online. Compute North was having some liquidity problems that were present and known to people working with Compute North apparently before Chapter 11. Marathon Digital offered to give them money, gave them $30 million in financing and a further $50 million in deposits in order to get machines online. Didn't stop, wasn't enough. Compu North is now in Chapter 11, and they're working on that right now. Of course, Compu North, they went into Chapter 11 not only because they had a lot of problems getting some facilities online, but also because they had a problem with one of their creditors, Generate Capital, which I think gave them about $300 million loan. And then that loan started drying up uh, for various reasons that I'm not especially familiar with. Uh, the interesting thing here is Marathon's place, right? So we see that they are online. They have about seven extra hash back online, which is great for the Marathon Digital team. But this is a lot of money, right? $30 million in financing. Who knows if they see that again? Could be a while to go through Chapter 11, get things auctioned off. Sometimes you only get pennies on the dollar for what you put in. And the security deposits are something too, right? You put down security deposits to basically park your place in line at a facility, at a hosting partner. So like, in six months, my miner will be on this rack. Well... Uh, do you get that money back also? Where was that security deposit money used? Did it go to contractors to develop the site? Did it go to container builders to build containers? Did it go to infrastructure providers to put up wiring and lines? Was it even used to purchase machines on behalf of others? We don't know. And we'll have to find that out as chapter 11 stuff happens. But you know, in total, that's $80 million of a whole in Marathon Digital's books, which is a substantial portion of money. I think Marathon's going to be fine. They have a lot of great financing people over on their team that honestly, they might be one of the best financiers out there in mining. Uh, so they're probably going to be okay, but I'm sure they did not love seeing this headline or looking at those numbers. Yeah. I, this is another bad news bite for marathon, unfortunately, which is a trend now. Like everyone was sort of worried because they had a bunch of idle machines and then news came out about all of their hosting problems. And then they were under ESG pressure with their coal based Montana plant. Um, I'll just like try to throw like a nice, good twist for a marathon. I was looking at their numbers earlier today for their, their September press release. Um, and they produced 360 BTC in September and 184 in August. So that they're trending in the right direction. It seems like they've completely migrated, um, from that Montana site to one in 
to the ones in Texas, right, to their other sites. Um, and they may have the most S19 XPs of any public listed miner, which, you know, is good for them as well. It's the most efficient um, machine on the market, as we've already talked about. So I think things could potentially start looking up for a marathon, but obviously this is a bad look. Yeah, it's a bad look and it's not necessarily their fault unless you'd say like do more due diligence but at the same time like they're it was their strategy right so you have a, either a asset light or asset heavy and they were asset light they didn't want to build sites they just wanted to buy miners and they've made some pretty strong statements about that during the bull market and why they thought that thesis was correct i think it is directionally correct unless you run into a very bad macro scene with energy costs infrastructure supply chains and then the asset light model has its problems. Uh, you can only throw so much cash at a wall before things are not going to stick. So yes, the behind the meter bad. miners are looking smart though right now. They I'll are. say that much. The hosting providers are. looking tough. We talked about core scientific last week and the lawsuit against yeah. them. Compute North chapter eleven. I don't the margins aren't huge on hosting and it's looking painful. It's tough and like even if you want to abstract a little bit more to the Bitcoin network in general Hosting is the only way for a lot of people to get into mining. Like you don't have the ability to go purchase energy. You don't have the expertise to build a hosting site. You don't even know like what wall sockets to buy, right? Like there's a lot to go into being a miner. And so hosting is oftentimes seen as like the way to decentralize Bitcoin a little bit more by providing more ownership for the mining layer. But then you run into these problems, right? And it's it gets a little sticky. So I, th- I think there's more conversations around that. It's a little philosophical for today, but I agree with you. Tough look for both Compute North and Marathon Digital. That being said, I think Marathon Digital is getting their machines online. And once they have those 200,000 plus units online, like what a beast. That's that's a lot of hash rate. So things are looking up. They got machines online. They have a decent amount of exa hash. We're already seeing it displayed in public numbers. So things are going to go a little better. Okay. That's all we got for today. Matt, any words of wisdom going to the weekend? I hope you prepared a Chinese proverb or two. (laughs) Nothing. Just go off, be fruitful, love life, get some sunlight. 